So, uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, we are on our live bright broadcast right now, uh, Dr. Umar. Um, so, uh, Assalamu Alaikum, uh, Dr. Umar. Um, what I want to talk to you about, or what I want to discuss with you, is um, Hagia Sophia converting it into a masjid. Um, so many Muslims are happy about this. So many Muslims are celebrating. I'm like actually surprised with uh, how many Muslims are celebrating such a, I would say, very wrong thing to do. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear me okay? Yes, alhamdulillah, I can hear you fine. Okay. Uh, may it please Allah to uh, grace us with uh, wisdom. Um, it's wrong. It's just plain wrong. There's nothing halal about it. Uh, and, uh, you know, I have my differences with uh, Sheikh Imran Hussein, but he's correct about this matter. He's always been correct about this matter. And um, I would defend his position uh, because this is not the Islamic thing to do at all. It's a hmm. Christian church. It's always been a Christian church, and it should remain a Christian church unless the Pope con converts to Islam. <laughs> you know, it, <laughs> it's just that's, that's the divine authority aspect. You see, that's the divine order. Um, there are different authorities in the earth, and um, you, you can't uh, buck this system without repercussions, especially if you pretend or uh, <laughs> pretend that was a kind of a slip, uh, but especially if you uh, state publicly that you are a Muslim. If you are a Muslim, then you follow the Sunnah. The Sunnah does not permit this. There's nothing in the Sunnah that does this. The only thing that is similar in the Sunnah uh, is the, the, the destruction of the temple of Alat, you see. And that was because mm -hmm. it was a pagan shrine. And it was openly uh, practicing black magic and was dedicated to the ancient mother goddess, who we can trace all the way back to uh, India, pre-Dravidian times, uh, where uh, Pakistan now is. And that is a temple dedicated to black magic. That's what it was. Now, mm. the mm. Hagia Sophia is, you can argue the position that it is somewhat similar, but not in the eyes of the believers who attend there, okay? I'm talking about the Christians. Most of the Christians think that they're worshiping the true God. And uh, for this reason, they are left alone, you see. They, they are left in peace as long as they pay the uh, jizra. That is the, haram, mm -hmm. that is the halal path to take here. And if you don't take that path, mm -hmm. then you're, you're bucking the system. You're not being Islamic. So, uh, I mean, we can pursue that conversation a little bit further yeah but I, I i want to share with you the the how the muslim scholars of the past and this is a very important question that you raised what about prophet muhammad demolishing the idols mm -hmm. versus the the churches and everything the way our traditional scholars have understood this is that the prophet said in that i have come specifically for the arabs what and to mankind in general and when a prophet comes to a place they have to either believe in him or be eradicated like prophet Lut, prophet nu prophet saleh you know prophet hud uh when a prophet comes they have to respond positively or face uh annihilation and so in this case they in the case of mecca they believed in the prophet in the end and because they all believed, the idols were removed. And uh, and so that's the reason the idols were removed. But our traditional position, and I can quote a few of our scholars, 
-hmm. has always been, and this is what I'm seeing. So this is like worse, Dr. Omar, because it was already bad when we were on the last veneer of traditionalism, right? Mm -hmm. so that was already bad. But what's happening now, this is below that. This is like, mm -hmm. this, is, this is moving away from our traditional stances, which mm -hmm. is based upon the particular verse that I will first actually show you that particular verse. So maybe mm -hmm. we can discuss it together. Actually. And uh, in this verse, uh, let me see if I can uh, share this screen with this particular verse. Mm -hmm. uh, can you see this verse, uh, Dr. Homer? No. Just read it okay. to me. Yeah. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, that uh, if it was not that Allah pushes one group of people against another group of people, uh, in other words, if, if, Allah, if Allah didn't put powers against one another, mm -hmm. then the facade of the world would be so much that لَحُدِّمَتْ صَوَاعِمُ وَبَيْعٌ وَصَلَوَاتٌ that the monasteries, the churches, and the synagogues would be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And the masjids, in, and then so salawatun, synagogues and masjids in which Allah is remembered much. Mm -hmm. Now, the point here that I want to share with you is that, um, okay, I see, I see. Um, maybe now you can see it? Not yet. Okay, so oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, to, Okay, now I see it, yeah, okay. But okay. I, 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 can't, I, I can't, it's, the print is very small, so I can't read it. But that's okay, okay I, no, I, no I, I'm with you, I, I, no. I'm understanding. Right, and so uh, the point uh, of, of, of mentioning this verse mm -hmm. is simply that um, is Allah don't destroy the churches and the monasteries and the synagogues. And the, this is a question Quran asks in another place that forcing a, a church to convert into a masjid is worse than even actually destroying it uh, from all perspectives. Because if you destroyed a church, well, no one will know about it. Uh, in a sense, of, like you can't see it, but then like putting salt on wound to convert mm -hmm. it into a masjid and say, haha, we got your church, right? Yeah. Your holiest site that you ever had, we mm -hmm. we just converted it into a masjid. That's like trying to put uh, uh, salt on someone's wound. Mm. And uh, it's worse than what Allah is saying in Quran, in, in my feeling. And... Yeah. Uh, just uh, just as an example, I will quote. Um, uh, I will quote. I have a few scholars I can quote here, but I just want to quote um, uh, one Imam Qurtubi, who is amongst the early early tr uh, uh, translators and and mufassir uh, exegesis of the Quran. He says uh, that. Uh, Included in this verse, meaning the verse that we just read, is the prohibition of demolishing the churches of non-Muslims. Now, they mm -hmm. didn't even think about uh, taking a church and converting it into a masjid. They mm -hmm. were just talking about, okay, if an army comes, do you, you know, destroy a church? Mm -hmm. uh, their temples and their houses of uh, worship. And this is for uh, the tafsir of Imam Qurtubi. I can quote many of these, but this is just mm -hmm. one example. Mm -hmm. Now, some historians... Turkey came out with a response saying, oh, no, we bought, uh, they bought this. It, the Muslims bought uh, Hagia Sophia, which, again, doesn't make sense to me at all, because who would sell Makkah or Medina? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's like you can't sell Makkah or Medina. It's like no one, and uh, Christians are more religious in some ways than Muslims. They wouldn't do that to their own holy site. <clears throat> but, you know, I don't want to go into the into into the the whole argument of that or the polemics of that but mm -hmm. i i wanted to just take your take on this whole situation and especially how it relates to what now this uh this uh, this the timing of this issue can lead to uh what might happen to al-aqsa 
Well, uh, he, he, you know, when, whenever a political leader is losing uh, his grip on power, he does some grandstanding, and uh, mm. that's what this is, um, uh, in my perspective. Mm. I mean, aside from the right or wrong. That's a it, very good point. So he's just grand, he's right. grandstanding. That's what he's doing. Right. And he wouldn't do that unless he had been given the uh, go-ahead uh, by the uh, uh, leaders, the, the Guelph uh, families who conduct the uh, world system. Uh, I'm talking about those people who own the banks and the bankers uh, who sit at the high table. Uh, and uh, discuss these things. It, such a move is not made without their permission. So that mm -hmm. means that there's this grandstanding move is uh, being uh, made in order to foment this fitna and to take it another level up. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about different things here at different, uh, different layers of the onion. Yeah, uh, as far as the Sikh is concerned and uh, the Muslims is concerned, they're downgrading their intellectual grasp of the situation. Mm. All right, they're just becoming more stupid. Okay, so uh, that's you can't do. Dr. Omar, what you just said is so amazing because I just recently read this statement. I uh -huh. want you to comment on this. Statement. One of okay. the great scholars of Islam, named Ubaidullah uh -huh. Sindi, said. Mm -hmm. That when Allah wants to punish a people, mm -hmm. He takes away their political insight. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. Well, because uh, that so just happened. Said, mm -hmm. He said, "When Allah wants to punish a people." Now, Ubaid al Sindhi, just so uh, you know, so people may know who he is. He's one of the main people. That were like students of uh, <laughs> Sheikh Muhammad Hatti, who was like the Sheikh Al Hind of Islam and wanted to revive, ran the Khilafa movement with, uh, you know, one of the people that were with him, under him, was um, what's this guy called that's very famous, uh, Gandhi. Gandhi was working under Sheikh Muhammad Al Hassan. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, uh, they had this movement to restore, try to restore Islam back after the Ottoman Empire had fallen. Mm -hmm. And one of the people with him was Mona Ubedullah Sindhi. He was a Hindu who had become a Muslim. Uh -huh. And he was really upset with, uh, with the lack of political insight amongst the Muslim scholars. He really was. Mm -hmm. And he said uh, that, you know, in one of his statements, he says, when Allah wants to punish someone, all he does is takes away political insight. I want you to comment <laughs> on this <laughs> statement from your knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet and the previous <laughs> books of Allah, if you can comment on this point, and then we'll come back, inshallah, to um, the situation at hand. Well, you see, this has to do with knowledge, and uh, there, if if that statement is true, and it's it seems to have a uh, 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 it, it seems to have some truth in it. It's not something that I've considered in this fashion. But if the leaders are acting out of ignorance because of religious preoccupations, then their understanding of current events and political insight is a very uh, significant weak point okay so when you mm -hmm. want to storm a mm -hmm. castle you'll find out where the the weak spot is and then you set your battering rams or your 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 undermining uh techniques or your you know whatever it is you attack the weak spot okay and uh, so that's what that's what's done here so with um with their lack of current events and their lack of understanding, truly understanding their enemy, uh, then this lack of political insight is one of their weakest points. And so, of course, uh, you would attack that. 
And the enemy of uh, Islam has license to do this, you see. Uh, hmm. This is what I mean about spiritual law and divine order. If you are not following the Sunnah, mm -hmm. and if you are not uh, emphasizing the practice of the deen in the fullness uh, thereof, then you are giving license uh, to Iblis to attack you. And uh, the protection that Allah grants uh, through the angelic world is removed. And mm -hmm. one of the ways that this is removed uh, is by removing the, uh, the guidance that would others otherwise be given through dreams and visions, etc., etc., in this realm. So if Muslims are removed spiritually from uh, practical guidance and only given over and only dependent upon political leadership in which they have no real knowledge of the enemy, then <laughs> they, it's, this is like shooting ducks, you know, fish in a barrel for the enemy. Uh, they, hmm. it, the, the enemies of Islam understand human psychology and mob psychology very well. So they know which buttons to push. And when they're ready to uh, create more strife and more fitna and uh, take more dominion other than what they already have, they will do this. And if the Jews, for example, hmm. want to appropriate more of Palestine, you know, everybody's worried about the West Bank, but they've got it already. It's honeycombed with their highways yeah. and their settlements, for God's sake. I don't know yeah, what absolutely. all this is about, yeah. you know, and, and the people are making a fuss because they don't realize what the situation on the ground really is, you see, and that's because mm. they're stupid. <laughs> mm. That's just all there is. And they're led by stupid people. Okay, and mm. they put these stupid people in, in position, uh, and, and so this political stupidity is one of their greatest weaknesses. You add that to, to mm. psychological, psychiatric, and medical, <laughs> and geopolitical stupidity, and you've got a helpless nation on your hands. And then you put them under the leadership of somebody like this fellow in the, uh, Istanbul, and, and you've got all you've got all you've got a co complete recipe for for chaos there. And whenever the leaders want to cause bloodshed, all they have to do is push the right buttons. And this Hagia Sophia is the right button, of course. <coughs> that along yes. with the uh, uh, the uh, the masjid in Jerusalem. Yeah, the, the so-called Temple Mount. Those are two great areas, areas of uh, regions of, um, uh, of Muslim weakness. They don't understand really what's taking place there. Uh, and the Jews already have possession. Mm. Freemasons have had Turkey for a for hundred years now, for, 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 for more than a hundred years. Hmm. It's been under true, yeah. control. Mm -hmm. And the free which, which, which leads to another very important question. Is, Say again. Dr. Omer, uh, again. I wanted to share with you that uh, the idea of the Ottomans in the last 10 years in the Muslim world has been very romanticized. Yeah. I don't know if you know, but they've come out with a lot of movies. They've come out with a lot of, like in the United States, in Maryland, they mm -hmm. have like this $30 million masjid, right? With uh, the the parking on the basement and, you know, the whole works. I mean, it's, yeah. it's magnificent and beautiful. Yeah. But it's like they all of a sudden have come into the scene in the last 10 years as kind of mm -hmm. like the saviors of Islam and representatives of Islam coming out with these movies. I forget one of them is very famous. Mm -hmm. And uh, people have begun to see Erdogan as kind of like the Muslim leader. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and I meet Turkish people and a lot of them that actually know what he's doing are not. They don't think that they think it's all a charade. Mm -hmm. and, and anyway, so I wanted you to comment on uh, the Ottoman Empire in the past was not as Islamic as we would like to think it was. And that they did make a lot of mistakes. 
and uh, and that uh, that you know this this whole cultural brainwashing of of the or romanticizing of the of the Turks uh, of the the Ottoman Empire, not the Turks. Mm-hmm. Uh, think about that, and then how that's led to this church, and everybody's celebrating the converting of a masjid into a church. Well, the I mean, you mean uh, converting of a church into a masjid? Um, yes, it, yes. It, uh, this sorry. is yes. the Hagia Sophia is not just any church. Okay, it's like a you have to go back uh, to it, its origins, and Constantinople has its origins with Constantine. It gets its name from uh, Constantine. Now, this is a double-edged sword here, and Turkey is the home of the double eagle, the, the double-edged, the two-faced one. Uh, so everything you, when, when you look at Turkey, everything has two faces, including this Christianity, uh, the yeah, it's the it's the room or the the the, the home or the capital of the room R U M that um, that uh, Imran Hussein speaks of, but actually the room that's spoken of in the uh, scripture and in the Hadith concerns the Levant, not Constantinople. Okay. Mm-hmm. It may have been under that authority, but the room, the Christians who were close enough, close to the Muslims at the time, were in the Levant. Okay, and mm-hmm. many of them mm-hmm. did not. Mm-hmm. Many of them did not mm-hmm. believe in the Trinity. Many of them did not believe that Jesus mm-hmm. was God. Okay, that's why mm-hmm. amongst the uh, the believers in. Um, Khadija's families, for example, they were expecting Muhammad. She recognized him along with other Christians or so-called Christians. They weren't really mm. Christians in the in, in the sense that we conceive Christians today. Not at all. Mm. This was not mm. a monolithic institution. And the Eastern Roman Empire under Constantine was differentiated <laughs> from the West. Okay, they're not the same. This is a very important statement that I want the viewers to understand what you just said. Uh, Dr. Umar just said Christianity was not a monolithic uh, group of people, meaning there were many different varieties of Christianity vying against one another or competing against one another. Right? That's what you mean. Yes, they were not always competing. You just think of them as different tribes of people. Okay. Now, tribes aren't always in competition. They're just, you know, going mm. from place to place, trying to find forage for their animals and eating and, you know, just living just like normal people. It's the enemies of mankind who want to make an institution of these things. Okay. Mm. And they want to institutionalize the religion. That's oh, what, very good that's point. What, that, that is what ha- has happened to Islam. It's become institutionalized. Mm. It was never supposed to be institutionalized in the manner in which we now have it. Okay. And neither was Christianity. Mm. Neither was Christianity. But when you have a political mindset that's based on materialism and is the antithesis of the divine kingdom, the kingdom of Allah, the kingdom of God, which is what Isa was preaching and which is what Muhammad mm. brought then they want to institutionalize the religion in order to support the political view. And that's what Er Er Erdogan is doing here. He's being a a typical uh, uh, hero in the context. Okay. Now, when I'm talking about this, when I'm mentioning this, I want mm-hmm. you to think of the Roman emperors because that's what Constantine was. He was a Roman emperor. And Erdogan is in the land of mm-hmm. Constantine. He's not in the land of Turkey. <laughs> He's in the land of Constantine. He's mm-hmm. in the land of the old Hittites. He's in the land of Pergamum. Mm-hmm. He's in the land of the seat of Satan, according to the uh, biblical context. Okay. Mm. This is the center of ancient mystery religion idolatry next to Babylon. Okay. Right. 
And so, you mentioned in one of our talks that it went from Babylon to towards to Turkey. Turkey to, yeah, into Turkey yeah. and then into Rome. But it completed a circuit, you see. So it's now it went to Rome and then it came back. Constantine brought it back. He actually went when Constantine brought Christianity to back to Constant, uh, Constantinople, back to uh, 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 what was, what is now Turkey. He actually went up, sent his men up to the mountains where the mother goddess sat. All right, in her grotto on the mountainside, and had them chisel her idol out of the mountain, transport mm. it down to Constantinople, place it in what became Hagia Sophia, and set it up as the mother of Jesus. Mm. That's what Constantine did. Okay. Mm. No, so I'm saying this just to level. Clear the chessboard here, okay? <laughs> they just knock all the players down because they're all false. Mm. The entire system is based on myth, okay? Mm. There's no reality in what Erdogan is stating because if you want to get down to the brass tacks of it, uh, this Hagia Sophia was already dedicated to this mother goddess. Okay, so the whole mm. place was a place, uh, place of idolatry. But hold on, because the people who pray there don't know this. You see, the people who go and establish their relationship with whatever, with whatever they consider the moral order and the divine order, they don't understand this. Only the Magi, mm. the Magus, the Baal Shem mm. at the top understand this. And this is why mm. uh, the uh, scholars have said a thousand years ago that the people are corrupted because of the lies of the, Bukhari said this, because of the lies of the initiates and the sins of the Magi. Okay, mm. they knew, but today's scholars have lost all sight of this, and they no longer consider these matters. Mm. And Erdogan, <laughs> he mm. he doesn't care about these things. He's like Saddam Hussein. Mm. He's got his uh, his mm. pan Arabic imagination too, and he thinks he's going to restore the mm. ancient Ottoman. Uh, dignity. There were never was dignity. It was mm. all false because they were never Islamic. The dignity was mm. all based on the kings of the earth system. And it's all mm. imperial. It's all material. Mm. It's all based yeah. on the nafs. Okay. So let's just clear the board here for everybody concerned. And this is for my viewers to be clear. Uh, that uh, that uh, the Ottomans they used to kill off uh, everyone except for the oldest son. Maybe <laughs> that's an exaggerated form of the history, but yeah. it was something close to that. Okay. Uh, they forced converted uh, Christians to become their janissaries. This is yeah. why Orthodox Christians have a very very bad feeling towards Islam. I've met Greek people, and these uh, memories they are don't very old. They're very long. And there's hatred. It's a deep-seated hatred. And it's transgenerational, yeah. and it's well-deserved. Okay. Hmm. So um, this this whole thing, this is the, all Erdogan is doing is stirring up hell. He's not stirring up righteousness. Yeah. He's not stirring up get elected. Like he's yeah. stirring up hell. Okay. And... This is uh, this is one of the pretexts that can be used to just uh, create more slaughter. Now, you have to mm. understand something at the realm of the magician here, uh, those who deal almost face to face with Iblis. I'm not talking about your little tent shaman who deals with the, you know, your petty uh, uh, gin here and there to tell fortunes and all this stuff. 
I'm talking about the prince of the earth, okay? He who has power, because Allah has given him power to test right. the right on for the police. To test the righteous. And the righteous have been failing this test because the ulama have become stupid. Okay? And mm -hmm. I hate to keep on going back to that, but that's the fact of the matter. They do not mm -hmm. understand their enemy. They do not really understand magic at this level. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to understand, oh, you, you cast out a few jinn here and there. You think that's holy? <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. What's taking place in the world right now with the whole bloody earth wearing the mask, this is real magic. Okay. No, oh, wow. And this is under the auspices of the prince of this earth because the men mm. who are supposed to be acting righteously are not stopping his people. They're not standing up. The mm. doctors are standing up. They're standing down. They're saying, yes, put the mask on, mm. even though there's no medical evidence to support it. This is not scientific. Mm. So your Muslim ulama, professional otherwise, they're all jumping into the lizard's den here. And hmm. this is this this thing you see the last bastion of righteousness is the faith that Muslims carry in their heart now. The rest of the world is hmm. lost. It's hmm. not there anymore. So this has to be destroyed. You understand? The people hmm. who have this faith have to be destroyed. And Whenever the enemy wants to destroy your, 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 such people, he first educates their leaders or miseducates mm. them. Okay? And that's mm. what's happened now for centuries. Your leaders have been miseducated and they no longer identify, they no longer understand the enemy. And mm. so when somebody like uh, this pretentious puppet of Iblis in Istanbul stands up <laughs> and makes a, uh, a, 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 a saber-rattling move like this, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's being done to set a pretext for more destruction of the righteous people, those who have no voice mm. in the matter, because the ulama mm. have become stupid and un uneducated mm. and unaware of the tactics of their enemy. Okay. Mm. So uh, if I were the ulama, you see, in, uh, in, in Istanbul, I would get up at, at, at the minbar on Friday at Juma in the major uh, mosque there and call for God to strike him dead. Yeah, and I would say that it's haram <laughs> for Muslims to put it on, on that uh, property, the, the church, because Islamic law does not allow you to pray on stolen property. <laughs> oh, is that property the that is not lawfully uh, The whole thing is haram then. You know, you cannot pray on stolen property. No, no. There's, yeah. there's, there's, there's it's haram nothing to pray. Right. I would say it's haram to pray, and I might just do a special episode just explaining that point. <laughs> there's, there's nothing but right from a legal perspective. Yeah, there's nothing righteous about it, dear brother. So, uh, and since there is no uh, righteous people in authority now, uh, in amongst the ulama uh, and amongst the leadership, the political leadership of the Muslims. The correct thing to do is to withdraw from this mm. whole thing. And you remember during the, the Civil War uh, with Ali and uh, Muhawiya, uh, certain of the companions, they withdrew, you see. Yes. They, they withdrew. They refused to go out and fight because of this fitna. They, they did not want to kill the wrong people because everybody was confused. Uh, and this right, was right. This this happened. So one scholar, yeah. One scholar writes, and I want to get your response to what he says. Mm -hmm. uh, he says mosques in Spain have been converted into churches, bars, and nightclubs. <laughs> 
the Babri Masjid, which was a mosque in India, turned into a temple of idol. They wanted to transform Al-Aqsa in Jerusalem with all its sanctuaries as a as the capital of the Zionists. We've we've not heard a Western or Eastern voice condemning these crimes, but reverting the Hagia Sophia to a mosque exposed the hatred of the mentally eclipsed from the East and the West, he says. Yeah. The Alamra Palace Mosque in Garnoda was converted in uh, converted to a Saint, Santa Maria Cathedral. Masjid Qasim Pasha has been changed to Saint Michael Cathedral. The Jami Masjid of Qurtaba has been converted to a cathedral. The Masjid in uh, Ibn Adiz has been changed to a Salvador. You get the point. And yes. uh, he goes on. No one is mourning the diversity and rich Islamic history of the mosques converted, uh, turned into churches in Spain. And the the and and so the point is, therefore, we are justified in what we are doing also. <laughs> that, that's, about as, that's about as logical as a as a bee trying to fertilize a woman, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it, you know they, that that's just plain stupid. That's stupid reasoning. Okay, first of all, the Muslims had no right going into Spain. Okay, this was not the correct way to carry Islam anywhere at the point of the sword, and uh, this is what uh, the objection is by the Orientalists all across the board. Okay, and they're blaming the Prophet for this when in fact it wasn't it wasn't the Prophet who did it. It was uh, Berbers and mm. North African fools who, who thought they were God's gift to the earth. Uh, this is not Islam. There was nothing Islamic about Cordoba, except in name only. It's the same in the... It, it, that's another very romanticized... Muslim Spain is also another very romanticized... Yes, uh, yes. There, thing there, there, Muslim there, there, was, there was a great uh, amount of knowledge carried over and uh, as a result of certain Islamic principles. But those principles are just uh, reason taken, taken, to, uh, taken to a logical end. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, under circumstances. It was not an Islamic caliphate. It was never an Islamic caliphate. Uh, not in the true sense of the term. Hmm. If you wanted to have an Islamic caliphate there, then the, the king, the Christian king, would have had to convert, all right, to Islam, and then it would have become a Spanish caliphate. Mm. Okay, this is let let, let me set mm. something straight here. Let's go back to Ibrahim's example. Okay, Ibrahim was a very wise man, and of course he was not a Jew; he was a Muslim before we even knew what the term Muslim meant. Now, this is how he converted uh, tribal leaders. Here's one example. He's traveling one day, carrying on his caravan business, and he comes across an Arab sheikh who's down on his luck, okay? And this sheikh has a tribe, and they've been vandalized, and the bandits have attacked them and taken all of their valuables, and so they're just down on their luck and uh, of course they were idol worshippers they had their little tribal idols and all this sort of thing but abraham didn't get upset about that he sat down with the chief and he he sat down with the arab sheikh and he had a meal and he shared what he had with him and he noticed that uh, one of his daughters was rather beautiful so he offered to marry her and he gave the sheikh quite a handsome dowry in return and uh, the sheikh was really uh, pleased by this. And so the, the more he, as time he spent, and after the marriage, the more time he spent with Ibrahim, the, the more favor he found with Ibrahim's God. He said, hey, you know, this God is really re quite remarkable. And uh, so he wanted to know more about this. And lo and behold, he becomes a Muslim. Okay. Mm. And so what does Ibrahim do? Did Ibrahim take charge of his tribe? No, he left him. Is this how Abraham got married to Keturah? Yeah, I think that's her I, name. I, I, or... no, 
Katora was uh, another lady. But I'm, ju I'm just giving this exa example because okay. this is how Islam is spread. Okay? It's mm -hmm. not spread by, well, I, you became a Muslim because I introduced you to Muslims, so that makes me your chief, right? No. Mm -hmm. No. This is imperialism. This is using imperialism, this is using religion to support your political position so that you can plunder your enemy. Okay? This is what Muslims have been doing. They've been keeping up with the Khans for five, six, seven hundred years now, playing this game. Let's cross the Hindu river, take what we can, and then go back. Okay? With all their gold and silver and their best women. This is what the stupid Muslims have been doing. You call this Islam? Mm. Uh, I don't. Mm. And I'm sure that Allah doesn't either. Okay? Allah allows people to play these games because, in the end, he wants them to condemn themselves. You see? It's not Iblis who's going to condemn mm. them. We condemn ourselves. Okay? And when we do this, in the end, on the Day of Judgment, Iblis says, look, I, it's, that wasn't me. I just gave you a suggestion. You decided to do it. You. Hmm. Not me. I didn't do it. You did. You see, this is how it is. And this is what Muslims have, do, have done. And this is what Erdogan is doing in Turkey. And everyone who follows hmm. him is doing the same thing. They're going to same, face the same problem on the Day of Judgment. This is not Islam. This is not taqwa. This is not Dahwa. This is not missionary work. This is the work of the enemy. This is the work of Shaitan. Plain and simple. It's the work mm. of Shaitan. Okay. And this argument, well, they so, did it to our, Omer, this, to our this, legal, uh, co this legal court proceedings that they had, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, they got this uh, church to convert into a masjid. And they've already started praying, already started doing adhan. I don't know if you saw the pictures. And, no. you know, people are celebrating. But what I want uh, to hear from you is uh, how can this, how, how, what is the relationship between what they did there? Because they had power and force. Mm -hmm. And now how this could possibly uh, and uh, possibly uh, give Israel uh, or the Zionists with all the chaos that is mm -hmm. uh, out there for other people to deal with in their own countries with you know COVID-19 and everything and the economic losses does does this not now give Israel a full justification you've taken a grand Christian place like their Kaaba basically their their Mecca and Medina and you convert it into your mosque and so why can't we do the same with Al-Aqsa you know and they can I'm sure you know they're smart enough come up, coming up with certain any, court, any, court proceedings any, any, pro, any, pro, any pretext they will use okay so anything that is illegal that is halal gives them license both in heaven and in earth okay so anything that is haram that they I mean haram uh, I meant to say haram before anything that is haram that the Muslims do gives them full license to react mm. okay so yeah. that is that you know that's the reality that's divine law and this is above the Sharia okay because what uh, what when, when when Allah turns his face away, there's only one other face to face. And that is the face mm. of Iblis. That is the whispers mm. of Iblis. Because you're no longer mm. getting the Islamic inspiration. I've explained mm. this to you before. It doesn't happen. Yeah. People think it happens. Okay. People want to believe that it's, that it's happening. People want... To, to, to believe that God is justifying their position because they, they have a stronger uh, rocket or jet plane or whatever the case might be at the moment. Well, that's you know what Saddam Hussein thought, isn't it? Of course. And look what's happened yeah. to his people and everybody who believed in all him. The big names, all the big names that I can think of right now that I have heard from 
have praised this move oh. completely blindly. And, and I'm talking about big names, responsible let names. Them, let, let, them, let them go to hell, brother. Let them go to hell. Just tell your people the truth and let the people decide what they want to do, okay? And who they want to follow, okay? There's, there's no point in pushing this uh, to any point of argument. I, I won't argue with anyone over this. I will have a discussion yeah. like this. But if you want to argue the point, forget it. I just excuse myself. I've got more important things to do than to sit down and argue mm. with a fool. Okay. So, uh, and let people do that. If they want to sit down and have these discussions and arguments, let them do it. But not me. Not me. I have more important things to do. And so do you. Okay. So right. it's probably good that we're having this discussion to kind of clear the chess field uh, for the chessboard for, 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 for people who still have some reason. Okay. Who still uh, have Dr. Reason Omer, to think. Yes. Dr. Omer, does this not uh, reinforce uh, thoughts? And what you were thinking, does this not kind of like re-emphasize the fact that uh, a lot of these leaders are sold out? Well, you, you can say to a certain extent, some of them are sold out. Some of them obviously are. Uh, yeah, and some of them have sold out without realizing it. Let's take uh, Hamza Yusuf, for example. He's uh, just, uh, you know, recently come out and supported Bill Gates. And uh, this is just pure wickedness. It's pure evil. But why has he done this? Well, he's getting money from the Jesuits and Jesuit supports for his university. So, yes, he is sold out. Okay. Now, whether he's done this knowingly or not remains to be seen. I'm beginning to think, yes, he's done this knowingly and that he's playing both sides of the coins. And one of my uh, pupils has informed me that he's been, you know, educated by Jesuits all along. So if this is the case, then he's, oh, wow. he's, he's speaking out of both sides of his mouth, you know, like the American Indians say, he, he speaks with a forked tongue. And this is what Constantine did when he established Constantinople. Mm. When you Take the mother goddess <laughs> of the ancient pagan mystery religions and you bring her down to the, your capital, your new Christian cattle, capital, and set her up as the mother of Isa, who's supposed to be the mother of God. Okay. Mm. Uh, and let's just think about that for a minute. Okay. Yeah. Please let that settle in. That is the fundamental basis for this whole controversy here. But erase mm -hmm. that for a moment and think about the people who have gone to that church for centuries and prayed to what they believed was God Almighty. And in their heart, this was their intention, okay, to worship God. Mm -hmm. And in doing this, they established a certain moral order that allowed mm. law in order to prevail in the land to a greater mm. or lesser mm. degree. And when you're upsetting that intention on the part of the masses, forget about the leaders. If you're upsetting that intention on the part of the masses who sat in the pews, you're raising a mob to get out, go home and get their M15s and their pitchforks and their flames and come and attack you that's what you're doing that's mm. what Erdogan is doing and yeah. the jews and those mm. who sit above them who are believe me the jews are being manipulated <laughs> just as much as muslims and christians have been manipulated here okay they mm. watch this and they say yes well this is going to be our next pretext and of course you, you touch this one, they will then touch yours. It's a tit for tat. It goes back and forth. It's like the little kids sitting in the play, playground, you know. And they keep on hitting each other until the teacher comes and separates them. Don't they? That's what happens. And that's what yeah. 
That's and now if they by force or by legal means take Al-Aqsa Masjid, ah. the Christian world is not going to say anything. No. You're, no. I mean, e maybe even part of Europe are not going to say anything. <laughs> no one, Russia is not going to say anything. Yeah. Well, they're going to be like, well, we did that to our church, so. Al-Aqsa you know. was, Al was lost a century ago. Okay. Look, it's like this. That's the truth of the matter, though. Let, it let, just let, let manifested. Let me, let me make this perfectly clear. When General Alambi stood at Salahuddin's grave, he probably folded his arms and he said, well, dear fellow, where's your God now? Hmm. Are you getting the point here? It was lost then. Al-Aqsa was lost yeah. then, you see. And Allenby hmm. was there at the invitation of Muslim leaders who did not understand their enemy, and that includes Hussein, mm -hmm. who thought he was going to be the new king, right? <sighs> Please. Mm -hmm. Nobody is understanding this history. Nobody is seeing the forest. They're all looking at the leaves. Mm -hmm. They're looking at the different types of trees and all this, but nobody's looking at the forest. They're Nobody. looking at their, their wonderful future they've built in their mind. <laughs> no, no. I have, I have a friend of mine, one of my favorite students, and uh, uh, a really fine young man. His name is Sufyan John. And uh, hmm. he's in the Middle East now. And uh, he had thought about leaving and maybe going here, there, or to another place to make Isra. But then he came to the conclusion, no, my heart is here, my life is here. And after several con conversations with me, he, we concluded that, yeah, well, you know, if that's what your heart is, then you stay there and you do your best and you be prepared to die. Okay. But don't don't mm. think in terms of any degree of success and at one point he was grasping at some last straw here and he said well if isa and mati do come they're going to need to, they're going to need infrastructure right yeah because he's a he's an engineer an architect and i said yeah well they have weapons that spare the in infrastructure they have weapons that just kill mm. the people and spare the infrastructure mm -hmm. they can do that if they want okay so just be prepared mm. for the great loss because it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming to everyone's mm. door now. And uh, this COVID thing has made that very, very clear. Okay. Mm. I just went out. Yeah. <laughs> I just went out for the first time in public uh, a few days ago uh, uh, for, for quite a while. Last time I went out, I went to a mountaintop and uh, maybe 70% of the people who gone there uh, uh, were wearing face masks. Uh, this time I went, my son-in-law uh, took his son and us to visit a museum for trains. And J Japan mm. has great trains, you know, and they have a great museum mm. here in Nagoya. And we went to see this place. And 98% of the people were wearing masks. And in order mm. to entered the museum, I had to have my temperature taken. Okay. Oh. This is lunacy. This is madness. There's no reason for any of this. The COVID is just a cold. It's a bad flu. That's all. Nothing more. We've had worse flus in the last 10, 20 years. Sure. All of this is yeah. propaganda. It's just a test to see how pliable the sheep have become and believe me they're very pliable mm -hmm. when i returned from that outing i was very very saddened by what i saw mm -hmm. i was very saddened i only saw one family who did not wear the mask a mother mm -hmm. a father and their little four-year-old boy and they were obviously professionals who were well educated okay the rest of the world is following this thing. Now, I'm saying this because 
the powers that be behind the scenes who are in the hands of Iblis, all right, they're in his hands. Hmm. And they have chosen to serve him rather than to serve God. They have focused on destroying Islam and the Muslims for three, four hundred years now. They have made this a transgenerational focus of interest. You're the last bastion to fall. And believe me, you will fall. You will fall. Okay? So there's, there's no salvation here in anything that Erdogan, the fool, is doing. None. And all those who are following him are going right into the lizard hole along with him. Hmm. There's no rationale for this. There's no justification for it. Except that, you know, he's the man with power and he's the authoritarian who says, I'm going to do it. Hmm. And if anybody tries to stop him, he'll kill them yeah. or he'll destroy their business, whatever mm -hmm. the case might be. Okay. So, and even the opposition there, this uh, sect that was uh, associated with the man in Pennsylvania. Uh, oh, I yeah. Fatih Gulan. Yes. Yeah. The Gulan, even that sect was working for Iblis and they don't know it, you see. Mm. As successful as, as they are with education, they followed the Jesuit system of education, mm. even amongst their elders. And I spent some time with uh, some other elders in Malaysia because, <coughs> because uh, they, they had approached me in, you know, in efforts to get support and favor with the Malaysian government. I was in the ulama at that point. And I saw what they were doing, but then the longer I, the, the more intimate I became with them, the more I realized they were following a communist system. It was a pure communist system. Mm -hmm. And their teachers had no rights. They had to go and seek permission even to go visit their sick mother mm -hmm. in the hospital. You know, it, this is communism. Hmm. And they weren't getting a salary. They were getting a, some sort of a stipend. And if they needed extra money, they had to go see the, the local commissar. Okay. Hmm. You know, this is communism. This is, this is not Islam. Not at all. Hmm. And so even Erdogan's opposition, and I think they had something to do with putting him into power and to begin with. To begin with, hmm. I don't understand everything about the Turkish system. Okay. All I do know about the Turks is the only decent Turk I ever met was, was a mafia chief. He was an honest man. <laughs> we used to do black market work in, in Germany when I was a soldier. And mm. uh, I really enjoyed his company. We would go to the PX, fill my car up with all kinds of contraband, then drive uh, from, uh, <coughs> from, from, Europe, from Stuttgart uh, down to uh, Swabia go to the big city there, go into the Turkish quarter and set up shop in the Turkish restaurant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was wonderful. The restaurant owner and uh, this Turkish uh, mafia man, they were honest men. And mm -hmm. I still go and seek their companions, companionship to this day instead mm -hmm. of the companionship of ignorant ulama. Mm -hmm. All right? Because they're informed. Hmm. They understood the system and they worked it for the benefit of their people. Hmm. <laughs> okay, Dr. Um, I probably talk too much. We'll, <laughs> we'll, inshallah, next time, uh, yes. we'll end it here for today. Uh, yeah, okay. Inshallah, tomorrow, uh, if that works with you, Inshallah, then uh, Inshallah, yeah. let's do right now and then we'll take it from there. Okay. <laughs> Mm-hmm.